Hello, I'm Peter Vaughan and today I'm going to start this motorhome review with a history lesson. Because back in 2009, when I had less grey hair, well, less hair, and I was a lot slimmer, Swift Group launched their very first escape motorhomes. They took the front cover of which motor caravan magazine, it's now called What Motorhome by the way, and I took that front cover vehicle on a 1500 mile tour around Scotland and loved it. A colleague compared another model in the Escape range with three of its closest rivals and it won. And the Caravan Club put the Escape in its design and drive competition and guess what it won that too. No surprise then that we said Swift's new budget range is a real winner. Now back then, these Swift Escape motorhomes started at a little over 30 grand. They were all under seven metres long. But times move on. Escape is no longer the cheapest motorhome range from Swift. That's now Edge. So Escape has moved up and for 2022 there is a brand new Escape. Probably the most significant motorhome launch of this season, in the UK at least. And whilst we couldn't get a standard Escape to review, this high style is an Escape in all but name. In fact, it's an Escape with more, £6,000 more additional equipment, but not £6,000 more on the price, I should add. It's got different upholstery and some different fabric trim on the walls, but apart from that, the design is the same as the new Escape. And the High Style is exclusively available from Loudhams in Nottingham. So the only dealer special this year based on the Escape is this one. And I think it's now time to take a closer look. So here it is, the Swift High Style 674. And it bears about as much resemblance to that 2009 Escape as I do to an Olympic athlete. I think just about the only thing that's carried over is that it's a Fiat cab. So what have we got here? Well this is the largest in a range of five models. They start off with a just under seven meter rear washroom and garage layout. Then they move up through a selection of fixed bed layouts with French bed, twin singles or an island bed and at the top is this family model with six birds and five travel seats. This 674 is in fact the only one in the range that you can't have on a three and a half tonne chassis. This comes as standard on a four and a half tonne chassis so you've got loads and loads of payload. In fact over 1.2 tonnes of payload so it really is family friendly from that point of view. It's family friendly from the point of view of its size too. Look at it, it's 8.2 metres long. Not so long ago, that would have been Contiki territory, not escape territory. Sorry, this is high style. Everything that you see here is standard on a high style. Not everything you see here, of course, is standard on an escape. So this particular van starts at just over 75,000 pounds to which the only option you can add is an automatic gearbox and that's another £2,995, three grand in round figures. So this is a 78 grand motorhome, but it's a big motorhome, isn't it? As I say, 8.2 metres and a four and a half tonne Alco chassis. Now that Alco chassis could, should keep things lovely and stable on the road too, but we'll come onto that a bit more later. So all high styles are based on this latest Series 8 Fiat Ducato and they all come with these nice 16 inch alloy wheels and Lanzarote grey paint. Very on trend colour I must say. I've also spotted this rather neat new sort of skid plate diffuser whatever you want to call it at the bottom of the uh, bumper unit there. Looks quite sporty that. Then you've got this swooping roof line which hides the drop down bed over the front lounge. You've also got that big over cab sunroof as standard and 
Of course, the latest Multijet 3 engines now 2.2 litres in capacity, and these high styles all come with 140 bhp. There's no option to upgrade that, and all five models come with that same engine, whether they're manual or automatic. So, now time to give you a bit of an external tour of this high style 674. Well, first of all, you've got your fresh water filler, water tanks, fresh and waste, are underslung and heated. But they're not terribly big, especially for a family motorhome. Fresh water's 90 litres, but waste is only 68. You're going to soon fill that if there's five of you living on board. The gas locker, with these push-in locks, which I always find a bit fiddly, that will take two cylinders, one six and one thirteen. Then you've got an alternative filler for your fresh water, this ultra-flow filler, that's for when you're on a fully serviced pitch. Now, this may not be the biggest of garages, but it's an important feature in a motorhome that hasn't got a fixed bed layout. Better still, you've got loading doors on either side and a sliding door that gives you access to the garage from inside the van. These tie-down hooks, well, there's just two of them and they're fixed, but you have got heating, lighting and USB 12 volt and 230 volt sockets. Width in here is only about 640 millimetres and headroom in the lowest part in the centre of the garage is about 900 millimetres. Slightly more, of course, at the end where you've got a couple of hooks, maybe to hang some sports gear or wetsuits or whatever, but there's no actual draining in the floor, so you need to be careful what you hung up to, uh, to drip dry, or perhaps put something underneath to catch the wet. Then as we go round the back of the van, doesn't it look smart with this swoopy rear panel? Very smart. I just hope you don't damage it because that is a one-piece GRP. No bumper sections or corner sections to replace separately. Good thing you've got a reversing camera as standard then. Right. Close the smaller of the two garage doors and you've got a bit more external storage. Again with these fiddly pushing locks under the rear sofa on this side. Then you've got an external gas barbecue point, of course the alloy wheels, cassette toilet servicing hatch, and of course your mains hookup with alongside a three pin main socket. So you can use a mains appliance outside as well. And then this nice wide habitation door that's linked to the central locking and doesn't need an external step it's just got an internal step and as I say nice and wide for easy access especially when you've got armfuls of stuff that you're loading up to go away on holiday. Now finally we're inside the high style 674 and with some motorhomes you ask yourself now why would somebody choose this? But with this motorhome there's absolutely no doubt why you'd choose this model it's space. Space, space and more space. Just look at the size of this front lounge. That offside settee is more than six foot long. You could get, I reckon, nine people in this lounge without any trouble at all and seven would be very comfortable. So it's a super-sized lounge and it, it's great. It's got this big overcab sunroof, You've got a nice bit of rake on the backrests of the settees. And doesn't it look attractive and spacious? Decent sized windows on either side, nice mood lighting along the top there and under the drop down bed. And then you've got reading lights, these swivel reading lights in the cab, as well as these slightly oddly positioned main sockets on either side. What would I change? Well, I'd like more, more reading lights for the lounge as well as the cab seats. There's also a height difference between the cab seats and the, uh, the settees because there's a drop in the floor level. Now, if you're short in the leg, you just need to be comfortable. Make sure that you're comfortable 
on the settees because they are just a, a tad on the high side. I mean, they're, they're fine for me, but as I say, if you're short in the leg, give those a try. I suspect a lot of the time you're going to be sitting with your feet up anyway because it's that sort of lounge. When it comes to dining, well, this table doesn't get in the way because like so many Continental vans now, it folds in half. When you want to unfold it, you just pull out that support and flip it over. And there's a handle at this end, which is quite stiff, but you can then twist it and slide it and move it all about. Place for settings for four, no trouble at all. Any more than that might be a squeeze, but you've got another lounge area at the back, which we'll come on to a bit later. Look at the lounge from the other end, and it perhaps shows even more how big this motorhome is. Remember, 8.2 meters and no fixed bed, so it just feels very, very large inside. What you don't get in this front lounge is much in the way of storage, because there's, there's no cupboards under the drop-down bed, and not a lot of storage under the settees, because you've got the fold-away travel seats in the the currently en vogue style. You, this uh, side city lounge is very much of the moment with the fold away travel seats underneath. We'll demonstrate those a bit later on. And then over on the other side, of course, you've got a nice big window in the habitation door, coat hooks and little recesses to put things that you, you might want close at hand when you're coming and going from the van. There's a brolly holder on the door as well as the bin. And then above the door, you've got your heating controls and your main control panel. Over here, you've also got a TV station, although there's no actual bracket fitted, but you've got mains, 12 volt socket, aerial socket, there's TV aerial as standard on the roof and uh, USBs. I have to say there's USBs everywhere in this van. The other thing that you'll notice on this side is your table control. So you can have it in its highest position, which is comfortable for the cab seats, or just lower it down slightly for use with the settees. I do like that, but it's more about actually making the bed. But that is a side benefit that you can adjust the table height. And I should perhaps add at this point that the Heater is, of course, the Truma Combi 6, gas and electric, as you'd expect in a big British motorhome like this. So run it off uh, mains when you're on a campsite with hookup, um, boost it with gas if you need to, if it's a, a very, very cold day, um, but uh, obviously the dual fuel. And importantly, you can run that while you're driving off gas um, because you've got the uh, safety valve on the regulator to allow you to do so. So the front lounge is the one that impresses with its size. You can bring your friends in, you can get all the family around the table for a game of cards, but when you want a bit more seclusion, I like this rear lounge. It's a bit cosier, it's slightly shut off from the rest of the motorhome because you've got the big fridge on that side and the washroom on this side. Um, so it's, it's slightly separated off from the rest of the vehicle. Not as big, but it, it just has a nice feel to it. It's not the conventional with the, the big U shape that you might have expected because of course you've got the garage here. And of course this area has dictated the size of the garage underneath. I love this big open shelf in front of the back window, somewhere for coffee cups, magazines, bowls of fruit, anything you like really. If you're staying on site for a few days, you might have a bunch of flowers here or something. It's, it's a nice area, this. You've got rear speakers as well. But I have a feeling, if this was my van, that my teenage daughter would probably requisition this space because, well, you've got two USBs there, two USBs under the top locker over there, two more over here, and some more here. And we know what teenagers are like for gadgets. I don't have that many gadgets, so I'm more interested in the fact that there's just enough room for me to put my feet up. Unfortunately, there's no reading lights. You've got these 
strips under the top lockers and the mood lighting at the top, but I do like some directional reading lights, and I'm not quite sure why Swift have been so mean with their reading light provision in this van, unless they're one of the many things that you just can't buy in 2022. In this area, of course, you have got the internal access to your garage that I showed earlier. And then you've got this slide out table. So not a big surface, but combined with the big shelf anyway, it's perfectly adequate for drinks and snacks. You take your main meals probably up front, unless there's just two of you, in which case, not quite sure why you need all this space. But unless there's two of you, in which case you could have two of you dine here. Or maybe you have four people dine up front and another two here. Although remember that although this is a six berth van, it only has five travel seats. So the, f the sixth person would have to travel separately. But before we move on from the rear lounge, I should also point out there's a lot more storage back here than there is in the front seating area. Not only have you got the garage, of course, but you've got decent sized top lockers with these rather unusual textured infills in the glossy white doors. But you've got big lockers underneath the settees as well. Now that side, of course, is the one that you can get out from outside the vehicle through that flap that I showed you earlier. This one's got the boiler in it, but it's still got quite a decent amount of storage as well. Top lockers over the rear as well. And then these corner wardrobes. Here's and hers wardrobes, one on either side. Um, they're quite a good size, surprisingly big actually. But it is worth noting that none of the top lockers have shelves in them, which seems a bit of a missed opportunity. When you're storing uh, folded clothes, it would have been much more practical to have a shelf, perhaps an adjustable shelf or at least a mid-height shelf. Um, because when you've got lots of stuff stacked in there, the danger is that when you open it, when you arrive on site, everything falls out because it's moved around as you travelled. So, more shelves, Swift. Of course, each seating area also has to become a bedroom at night. And it's quite simple in the back here because you simply pull out the seat frames, same system each side, but you do have to, of course, lose the scatter cushions. For comfort, you really need to turn seat cushions over to get a flat, flat bed. And having done that, this is actually the longest bed in the van, 2.02 metres long, because it goes right the way across the van, by 1.42 metres at that end, 1.32 this side where it's slightly narrower, but a good size double bed, only four cushions, and nice and flat. At night, you've got pleated blinds all the way around, including the cab. But when you want to make the front bed, the basis this time of the support is the table, which, as you saw earlier, is electrically operated. But this time, you need the table all the way down. And, of course, unfolded. table has to be perfectly central otherwise it won't go flat and then the cushions again really ideally need turning over and cleverly these sections are designed so that they slide underneath these backrest supports that give you that lovely rake to your backrest so that's the main part of your bed but if you want a full double there's a slide out panel here, and then you flip that over as well. Covers up the charging unit underneath there. Again, cushions slide under that backrest support. Because you've got the intrusion of these angled backrest supports, the bed here isn't quite as long as the one at the back, but it is a uniform rectangle, 194, 1 meter 94 long, 
by 1 meter 37 wide. More cushions obviously, but with them turned over, still a properly flat bed. That's two of the beds, but I've saved the best till last. Up here you have a switch and a key, key so that kids don't fiddle with it. But first of all, we need to undo this seatbelt style clasp, turn the key, press the button, and down comes the third double bed. Now there's a marker on the wall just next to the side habitation door that tells you where to stop the bed, and that is about here. Now, at this point we need to retrieve the ladder, As you can see, it's perfectly acceptable, perfectly practical to leave pillows and duvet in situ, and then it's just an easy climb up. And this one's got a lovely duvet mattress, so no joins. It's 1.85 meters long, although there is a bit of room for toes and pillows to overhang that. And 147, 1 meter 47 wide, narrowing to 1 meter 34 at the foot end, um, and that's just to ensure that there's no um, compromise with access through the habitation door, which is, which is great. A lot of these drop-down beds, they come down and partially or fully block the habitation door. There's none of that in this van, and it is a really super double bed. Even at this position, there's plenty of headroom. You've got ventilation from the overcab sunroof there. The only thing you haven't got, again, is reading lights. With the drop down bed down, there's just enough room to sleep underneath as well, effectively having double bunk beds. You also retain a little seat at the side, just somewhere perhaps to take your socks off. But more importantly, if there aren't six of you on board, if you only need a four berth, then the drop down bed can come right down just under a metre off the floor. And now, with masses of headroom. So the High Style 674 has three full-size double beds. It's perhaps a pity though that Swift didn't take the opportunity to put a second drop-down bed over the rear lounge. We have seen from other brands models with front and rear drop-down beds. And if you were using this as a four berth, the appeal of not having to make up beds, just press a button front and rear would be quite something. If there's only four of you, making up the back bed isn't too much of a chore, and this front bed, the drop down one, can come down reasonably low. But it does really need a short ladder, even in this position, it's a shame it doesn't come down even lower, and it's a shame also that they don't provide a longer ladder perhaps some sort of extending ladder for various bed heights because if you had it higher with a longer ladder you could still use the lounge below and there would still be enough room on the bed for young children. You see in this position I could comfortably sit underneath the bed, young children would be quite happy up there with enough headroom and there's nets at either end to stop them rolling out so mum and dad could carry on under here. I suppose you have still got the rear lounge, but it would add a bit more versatility if the ladder was a bit more flexible. Now, if you do intend to use this 674 as a family van, of course you need the rear travel seats as well as the beds, and you can't travel on side-facing settees. So, these sofas hide rear travel seats that fold away. And I'll show you now how that's done. First of all, the biggest cushions need to be dispensed with, and we'll stow these in the rear lounge. Now you can already see the first of the Agouti seats, or at least its frame, and it simply hinges up, revealing this nice steel frame, so nice and reassuring. This is a very early production model, so this has slightly changed. On the production models, this cushion is joined by a zip and it simply slides over the top 
of the seat frame. On this early example, you have to actually separate the back section. Head restraints pop in on top, and you need this little infill cushion, which goes at the bottom. Then this cushion forms the remainder of the base, and this one is the backrest. So there is the first of your travel seats, and you undo a little catch there to create a foot room. Process. Your travel seats have Isofix and neatly stored down behind this seat are two more headrests. So on this side you have travel seats one behind the other and then on the other side a single seat. So that's your five travel seats and that gives the 674 a big plus over some models where the fifth person would have to sit possibly facing backwards or ha just have a lap belt or even both. It is worth checking out the legroom because it's not huge in some of these seats, but for children it would be adequate. The other thing to consider is whether you're going to be travelling five up on a really regular basis because then you might prefer to look at a layout with a Pullman style seating area where you're not constantly rearranging the seats where they always stay in the same place and the seat belts are just ready to use. So there's room for the family to sleep and for them to travel. What about family cooking? Well, as you'd expect of quite an expensive British motorhome, you've got everything that you'd expect. The fitted microwave, the oven and grill, the mains hot plate, three gas rings. Yeah, it's, it's all here. You've got a couple of mains, main sockets just there, which are convenient when you lift up this flap and extend the worktop, because you can just put your kettle or toast or whatever there, and the lead will easily go round the corner. You've got a large pan drawer under the oven, and another one under the fridge. The fridge is 139 litres and it's got automatic energy selection and in the latest style it opens from either side. So if you're really lazy and you're sitting in the rear lounge you can probably just about get a drink without getting up. Top lockers include plate and cup racks and then there's a rather disappointingly small cutlery drawer hidden away in this cupboard. In here you've also got a removable draining board and a chopping board cover for the sink. Not much more you could want really, apart from perhaps a nice soft close mechanism on the drawers which would certainly give them a greater feeling of quality, but other than that, it's pretty much spot on. So what about the washroom? Well, this is an area where previous escapes and even Swift's newer edge range fall behind a lot of the continental competition because they don't have a separate shower. Well, with this high style range, that wrong has been righted and you've got a really nice separate shower with lots of headroom, fantastic headroom, I think it's nearly two metres in there. Only one drain but nice marble effect wall, bifold door, no horrible shower curtain, everything you could want really. Um, the only slight criticism is there's a little recess somewhere to put your shampoo but it's got a slope so if you're not on a completely level pitch your shampoo's going to fall on the floor. Hey, not the end of the world. The rest of the space looks nice, doesn't it? Um, you've got a big mirror, two roof vents. Um, should have mentioned too, in the shower, you've got an eco camel shower head that saves water. So remember that because you have only got 90 litres of fresh in the tank. Reasonable amount of storage. 
good work top next to the bison. It's not the biggest area, it's a little bit tight around the loo, but a huge improvement over some swifts that we've seen before. Now, normally at this point in the review, I would be taking you for a little jaunt around the Nottinghamshire countryside and tell you exactly what this Swift is like to drive. But unfortunately, this one is awaiting some attention at the Fiat dealer because of an ESC recall. So it's limited to 10 miles an hour and I don't want to be on sunny traffic or maybe Jeremy Vine talking about motorhomes causing tailbacks on A roads around Nottinghamshire. So we'll stay here. I'll tell you what I can about this Fiat. And the first thing is the 140 engine, well, it's going to be adequate more than sparkling, I think, especially if you have five people on board and all their gear. If you're getting anywhere close to the four and a half tonne gross weight, not sure 140 bhp is going to feel all that great. But the next one up in the Fiat hierarchy, the 160 engine, is about as available as rocking horse poo at the moment, so I think 140 will have to do. What you do get on this high style is the very latest all digital dashboard, which I have to say looks rather good, doesn't it? I'm not a great fan of these things normally, but this is this does look very clear and yeah, very modern. You've got the leather steering wheel with all the little switches for your phone and uh, cruise control, radio and so on. Also, now most vans, even at this price range, you see aftermarket head units, but here you've got Fiat's own 10 inch uh, LCD display, touchscreen display. You've got sat nav on there, very sharp, very clear display. You've got your radio on there, vehicle functions, the only thing you haven't got on here is your reversing camera. Strangely, that will be a separate screen. It's not yet been fitted, but that's a bit disappointing. It would be nice to have that shown through this central display. Below that, you've got a separate display for the digital uh, climate control. So much nicer than just on off air conditioning. And this does look a whole lot better now. You've got this uh, separate heating display. Traction Plus and Hill Descent Control are standard on this vehicle. Um, of course, the air conditioning, passenger airbag. But the big difference, perhaps, over a lot of other vehicles is that you've got heated seats. So, very full spec on the, the Fiat cab. But the two key things that you get on a high style, but not on an Escape, are the digital, dis digital display for the dashboard and Fiat's own fully integrated touchscreen display for the uh, sat nav and the radio. Very smart, that. So, my final verdict on this Swift High Style. Well, it may be based on an Escape, but it bears no resemblance to anything that's worn the Escape badge before. It's a lot more contemporary and a lot more continental in design. I like the drop-down bed and that huge lounge area at the front. And I particularly like this more cosy seating area at the back, especially with this big shelf and the fact that they've combined a rear lounge with a garage. Yes, there are some flaws. Not everybody will want to make up two double beds. And it would have been nice to see at least an option of a drop down bed in this rear lounge too. You also need to consider whether you want to drive a vehicle as big as this. It's 8.2 metres long, remember, and that is a big motorhome. It's a four and a half tonne chassis as well, which of course will need a C1 category licence. There are other layouts like this available at three and a half tonnes, but often with quite mediocre or minimal payloads for a family. So, if you want the space, if you want the payload, but more, more than anything, if you just want this living area, this lots and lots of seating, well, this could be a van worth putting on your must-see list. <laughs>